Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me again. Um, today I've got a really fun, quick and simple, easy tutorial for you. I have combined uh, some of my previous videos and kind of created a new little fun project. Um, some of you may have watched my videos on making notelets. I will link them down below. I did, I think, three different videos. Maybe it was two, but I'll link them down below anyways in the description box and you can take a look. These are my notelets. I keep them in this little box and this is my go-to box. So anytime I want to leave a note for um, maybe the postman or a quick little thank you to the bin man or someone over the road picked up some groceries for me, I just want to drop them a little thank you. I love giving little notes to people to say thank you and I like when they're handmade. I feel like it just means a lot more. And I have a whole office full of craft crap so I really should be using it. So this is my box of notelets. I've done a series on using up your washi tape and how you can make notelets with your washi tape. I did watercolory notelets um, and then just standard notelets and I often put my little um, stamp at the bottom so people can see that I've made it if they want to get in touch they can if they want to follow me on YouTube um, but I've done just a whole bunch of sort of little notelets I can grab so I have got some that are a six size so this is a sheet of paper cut into four I have also got a five which is a sheet of paper cut in half um, and these are cardstock, but they're like a paper cardstock. They're very thin, and then that way I can just fold them in half and stick them in a standard size envelope. So that's what I like to use these for. Um, I was finding I was running a bit low on my thank you ones, and so I thought I need to make some more. So why not make some more with you and share with you the new ones I've come up with. So this is my fun go-to box. I also need to make some more envelopes that match. So I will do that at some point as well. Um, and I've got tons of notelets, but not a lot of envelopes. And I really love when I give someone a little notelet. Let's say, let's use this one here. And I've done a matching envelope that goes with it. I just find it's such fun stationery. My other plan and what I have done is I like to do sets of 10 notelets and 10 envelopes and then I give them as gifts to people as well. So I've got the ones that I use myself but I also will make up little bundles and give them to people so that they can give notes away as well. I think we don't write enough to each other in pen and pencil and I think it's really important. I think it shows a lot of love when you give someone something that's handwritten and handmade. So I do plan to make up lots more notelets and give them away as Christmas gifts as well. So, I will link my videos below to the notelets I've made previously, which are in my little box here, and we're going to do some new ones today. So I'm going to share with you how to make your own little fun stamps and make the most out of your dies. This is not a new trick, this is not my idea. This is something that a lot of crafters do, but it is fun and I forget about it all the time, so I thought I would do that today. You can use stamps by all means, go through your stamps, have a look, see what you got, and then use those if that's what you've got. Today I wanted to make the most of dies and get more out of our dies. So I've gone through and dug through and dug out a bunch of my dies. These are all surprise creation ones um, that are small that I could stamp onto my notelets. And so I've just had a look through my dies and pulled out a bunch of them and started having to play. So the first task you need to do is find a bunch of dies that you've not really used or some that are your favorite um, they can be as detailed or as simple as you like. The more detail, the more fun you can have. Have a look, dig them out, get a few ready, and then we're going to make some stamps out of them. So the next thing I have is this peel and stick foam sheet bundle. Now, I don't know where you would get it in the UK. I bought this at Walmart in Canada when I was last home. And this was in the kids' craft section of Walmart. Now, what it is, is it came with 40 sheets of foam and they all have adhesive already on the back. Now, you don't need the adhesive backed ones. I'm just lazy and I like the adhesive backed ones. Now, most places, most countries sell it in the dollar store, the pound shop, the Dollar Tree, that kind of thing. You can often get some fun foam and it's usually found in the children's section and it's just three thick foam 
um, really simple to get a hold of. I will link some down below to Alina's shop. I know she sells 3mm fun foam and it's really reasonably priced. It's quite good because if you want to use it to make shaker cards and things, you can get it in black and white um, or you can get multiple colours. I'm using this up today because it's all crazy colours that I wouldn't use for shakers because I really wouldn't want these colours poking out from behind my card. So I'm using this up. Use what you've got. Whatever foam you've got, use it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own stamps just to make the most out of our dies. And like I said, you can go ahead and use normal stamps from a normal stamp set. That will be absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to share with you how I did mine. So for fun, I thought I would use this Halloween stamp set. Halloween is coming up and I thought it could be actually quite quick, quite cute, sorry, to make some little Halloween notelets that I could give to my children's friends as something a little bit more special with some sweets for them. So I'm going to use these pumpkins and we'll do another one as well after this one. I have got plenty of samples to share with you at the end, so stick around to the end. I've got loads of different examples of what you can do. So to make sure you don't waste your fun foam, it's worth just cutting a chunk so that you've got your chunk ready to go in your big shot. Otherwise, it can kind of distort your foam when you run it through, so you don't really want to be running it through more than once. Now, on my fun foam, I have got some air bubbles. You can see these tiny little dots on my fun foam. I'm not sure if it's catching it, but there's one just there. I don't know if you can see that. When you put your dies onto your fun foam, make sure, if you have got some little air bubbles, avoid them because they will show up when you make them into a stamp. So avoid putting them over top of those bubbles because then you'll avoid having them use, um, come out as your stamped image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through my Big Shot once I cut it out. So I've got it kind of lined up how I want it to go. I'm going to cut my little section out so I don't waste my fun foam. Now I'm going to run it through my Big Shot like this just once. I'm going to use it as if this was a standard sheet of cardstock and do the same sandwich that I would do normally for that and run it through once. Don't be tempted to go backwards and forwards just once. It will warp the foam. You'll get a distorted image. So only go through once and I promise you it will cut through every time and it will cut through detailed and intricate things. Okay, so I went ahead and I ran that through my Big Shot and you can see it's kind of got the marks on it from being squashed and that will be fine. You just pull it out, cut absolutely perfect. Now the other thing that is helpful and handy to have is some clear blocks. These ones I got from Stampin' Up when I was a Stampin' Up demonstrator. Any blocks will do. I will try and remember and link Alina's down below in the description box. She has a whole huge range of different sized blocks. These are some of them here. Um, so you can get a whole range of sizes. Now the nice thing about her blocks is they have got grid lines on them, which is quite nice. Um, she does quite long ones, slimmer ones. I'm just using what I've got and my Stampin' Up ones were on my desk, so that's what I'm gonna use right now. Now all I'm going to do is just peel off the back because mine has already got adhesive on it. Now like I said before, this is very simple, a lot of crafters have done this so you might be a bit bored watching this bit. It does get a bit more fun. <laughs> so you're just going to stick it down. If you have not got the adhesive on it, this is where you would take your tape runner and run it along the back or you could take um, a bit of liquid glue that's more of a tacky glue. Um, I would avoid using something like a mixed media glue because that would probably permanently stick it onto your block. Um, but something like a tacky glue you could probably rub off a bit with um, a bit of acetone. So nail polish remover. That's how I tend to clean all the sticky off my blocks when I get a bunch of sticky adhesive stuck to them or something. I just take nail varnish remover and I just rub it right off with that and it works really well. So this is a bit overkill for this little pumpkin, but I'm just going to use what I've got. My other blocks are full and I'll share with them, share them with you in a minute. So these are going to be our stamps. Now, I have played with both Distress inks as well as Distress Oxide inks, and I'll share with you the difference between them. But the really nice thing about the Fun Foam is you can use Distress inks with them. Now, a lot of times, if you were to use photopolymer or especially um, silicone stamps with a Distress Ink, 
you won't get an impression very well. You, you will definitely need to use a stamping platform and do it multiple times. You just will not get that clear of an impression. If you use fun foam, it slightly sucks in some of the ink and you get a really beautiful clear image just using a normal distress ink. So I'll share with you both versions. For today's first little jewel, I will just use the distress ink, not distress oxide. So I'm gonna use the spiced marmalade and I'm gonna use squeeze lemonade. I don't have very many colors of distress ink. I only have one orange and I have one yellow and I have the same orange and the same yellow in the Distress Oxide, and that's kind of all I've got. I've got a couple pinks of each, um, and then I've got sort of one green, one yellow, one orange, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I'm gonna share with you how I did my little backgrounds. So today I'm going to use my A6 pieces of cardstock. Now these ones are uh, my 300 GSM cardstock from Lime Tree Crafts, and it's a bright white card. You can use watercolor card, it will work just as well, but if it has got a bit of texture on it, it may not stamp as clear of an image and you might wanna use a stamp platform. You can use a stamp platform with these as well, just stick them onto the stamp platform like you would a normal stamp. I've not had any issue with the adhesive sticking from these onto my blocks. I've just peeled them straight off and put them in the bin if I'm done with them. They're not a lifetime use stamp, but they do work really well for a fun, quick technique. So I'm going to use A6 cards because I want to do, my idea was I wanted to do a nice beautiful card and then do my writing on the back of it and just stick it straight into an envelope. But I'm low on thank you cards so that's what I wanted to do but I'm going to do some Halloween little cards for um, children because Halloween is coming up in two months. Gosh, I'm a bit ahead of time, so whoops. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start with the biggest one first, and I'm just gonna ink it up, and I'm gonna kind of rub it into the ink pad a bit, just so it kind of gets really into that fun foam. Now the fun thing with die cutting fun foam is if you've got embossing on your die, it will push that embossing in as well, and you will see that embossing when you stamp with it. Now that's not going to matter too much with what we're doing today because we're going to kind of ruin it a little bit um, But for future if you wanted to use them as a stamp, that's what you could do So I'm just going to go ahead and pop a few pumpkins down Now you don't get necessarily as crisp of an image as you would with a clear stamp like really sharp edges But I love how it looks and it feels really nice when you're stamping with it as well I don't know why but it just it just gives a beautiful coverage and I really like it. So I'm just gonna stamp down a few pumpkins, kind of go a little bit random. I've got my Alta New Mixed Media Mat behind it, so I'm gonna wipe in between each card that I make so I don't end up with a big mess going on the back of my card stock, if that makes sense. Like if this were to shift around, I'll get ink on the back of it. Right, I'm gonna do this no, I'll do the little one rather than the fatty. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just really squish it into that ink pad. And you can't tell because it's yellow on yellow. So we're just going to have to hope for the best and stamp it down. And the more you stamp with it, the better the result gets as well. So sometimes it's worth just doing a few practice stamps on a scrap bit of paper. And you'll find that your stamp will get really nice and really juicy in a sense. Right, so that is all done. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it straight into my box to be able to spray it. So some of you might have seen my latest tutorial on making your own sprays, and I will link it down below, and I'll try and link it at the end of the video, but I've just taken some mica powder and made my own sprays so I can get really fun, shiny backgrounds. So that's what I've done with these little bottles. The tutorial will be down below, so make sure you go and check it out. So in my last video, I had a plastic box that I did this in. <laughs> Today I've just got a cardboard box because I've used the plastic box to store some of my cards that I've been bulk making lately. <laughs> I ran out of space for those. I'm gonna use the light gold. This is an Arteza mica powder. I'm gonna swirl it, not shake it, so it doesn't get stuck in the um, nozzle of my spray bottle and I'm just gonna start spraying it and the quicker you do this after you stamp the more bleeding you're gonna get so you can already see 
all that bleeding that's going on. So what I'll do now is I will heat set that with my heat tool to dry it quicker so that we can move on to the next step. Now the last time I did this, I had quite a lot of people comment on my video and ask me if the mica powder rubs off because all I've done is I've added water and the mica powder together to make this fun solution to spray onto my cards. Now, yes, it does rub off. I'm not bothered because I'm only doing quick little cards. If I was doing a mixed media project that I wanted that shimmer to really stay, I would either add something to my solution, like maybe gum arabic, to make the um, solution adhere properly to the card, or I would use something after to kind of seal my project and keep that mica powder on. Now you can see this is very shiny. The mica powder is really on there. It looks stunning and gorgeous. And yes, it will rub off and I will get a tiny bit on my finger, but not much. I still get to see a lot of that shine still on there. So I'm not bothered to worry about adding extra stuff in. That's just a side note if you've watched my last video and you were wondering about that. So I don't have um, a stamp set or anything that says Happy Halloween or Trick or Treat. I'm not really a Halloween person. I don't tend to do much more than take the kids out if they want to go trick or treating. That's kind of about it. I don't really send cards or do scrapbooking around it or anything like that. So I don't have something that says Halloween or that would imply that that is designated for Halloween. So I have gone and die cut out Halloween with the same die set from Cre Surprise Creation. And I'm just gonna use that as my stamp. Now it was quite sticky, <laughs> stuck to my fingers a lot. It's a little bit wonky, but I don't mind. I think that's quite fun and adds to the fun element of the card. So what I like to use to stamp my sentiments down with is my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This is a pigment ink, so it's really juicy and really thick and it does take a second longer to dry but this is the blackest black I've ever used and it is my favorite by far so this is the one I always use when I want to stamp a nice dark sentiment so I'm gonna get this really inked up and it doesn't take much as you can see because of the pigment ink it inks up really well now that is a good point lesson learned that's correct this way isn't it that's not gonna stamp so nice. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. We're gonna cut that again. This time, we're gonna cut it with the die on that side so that we get it facing the right direction. Whoops. Okay, so I'm gonna guess that most of you would have pre-figured that one out. <laughs> Sometimes my brain just doesn't work. I was all convinced that that was gonna be so awesome until I went to put it down and then realized it was cut the wrong direction. So I guess that's quite a good thing to note that if you want to do something like this um, and you want your image facing a specific way, it's worth bearing in mind what side you cut it on. Now I'm just trying to stick this down so it's not too wonky. And again, I'm sorry, this is probably a bit of a longer video again today. All right, so that is all on there perfectly. I'm gonna do a little pre-stamp to make sure it's okay. Because I die cut it down, upside down, my bumpy side of my plate was this side, so it kind of warped and indented that fun foam a bit. So I've got a little bit of scrap card here. I'm gonna stamp it down and see how that stamps. A little bit blurred, but kind of goes with the Halloween. I mean, this is quite a small bit of die cutting, really quite thin. Let's get that really inked up and we're gonna push really hard and see if we can get rid of that wonky looking bit of writing. I'm gonna push quite firm. I don't wanna to rock too much because you can see I've got my ink everywhere. And that looks a bit better. I'm happy enough with that. If I had a Halloween stamp or a thicker Halloween die, it would probably look a lot better. But we're gonna roll with it because that's what I've got and I want this idea to work, so we're going for it. All right, so I'm gonna get really juicy, really inked up. I'm gonna aim for the middle, stick it down, and give it a nice firm press across. And mucked up. Never mind. 
I will keep practicing with this and I will keep playing with it, but I quite like how this has turned out anyways. And I think it's important to share with you my muck-ups along the way. So I don't know what I'll 100% do with that. I could probably try rubbing it out and just see if I can blend it into my messy background as it is. Or I'll just do another one and have another go. Okay, so next I thought I would share with you making a card using a fun, more intricate die. So I've got this one from Surprise Creation, which I think is supposed to be like a pinwheel um, wand type shaker wand sort of thing. I like this shape here. And I thought it would be fun to use as a background on one of my little thank you cards. So for this one, I'm going to use the Distress Oxide to share with you kind of how that looks and how that reacts differently. So I'm going to use Peacock Feathers, which is my all-time favorite color. I love a good teal blue. All we're going to do is ink it up. And we're going to ink it up so we can see where our ink is going. And just get it nice and juicy and covered. Because again, I'm not using a stamp platform, so I'm going to get one go at it. Although we are going to spray it, so it gives you a bit of forgiveness and ability to change things. So you stamp that down, and you get a beautiful image. Again, I'm going to ink it up and just stamp it down. And I'm just going to have fun and cover my background a bit. Now you could do different colors. You could do two colors in one if you use an ink blending brush. You could add on two different colors and really have fun changing it up. There we go. Now do you remember, it is wet ink. <laughs> the Distress Oxide stays wet a lot longer so I've just smudged it but I'm not bothered because we're gonna go and spray it. So this is designed to be a fun quick way to make some note cards so it doesn't need to be perfect doesn't need to be amazing if you get ink on the back of it it's going to be fine um, but I wanted to share this with you because I find these are just such nice things to have to give away to people so again I'm going to just clean the surface really quick before I then go and muck up the back of my card too much so again, I've got my box. I'm going to use the white, so I'm just going to roll it in my hands a little bit and then give it a swirl and try not to shake it because it might go and get the mica powder stuck in there. And we're just going to spray. And you can see this one reacts so much more than the normal distress oxide or distress ink. Sorry. I'll come in and dry that. Now the other thing I found when using Distress Oxides is if you are using a shimmer spray, it gets very muted. So if you remember the disastrous Halloween one we just made, <laughs> I still love it, I really do. Um, you can see that shine and that shimmer, it's really predominant. This one you really have to angle it the right way to catch any of that shimmer at all. It's very, very muted. So for whatever reason, the Distress Oxides kind of, I think it's the chalkiness to them, you end up kind of losing that shimmer for the most part. So that is one thing to, to point out as well. So this is just a thank you from my stash. And again, I'm going to come in and use my Versafine Onyx Black ink because that is a nice dark ink. And I'm just gonna aim for the center and stamp thank you. So I love this. And now I can do an envelope the exact same. So I'm gonna take my envelope, I'm gonna take my peacock feathers again, ink that up. I will sort of stamp one of the corners. Obviously most of these I am going to hand deliver. I'm not going to put them in the post. So I'm not too worried if it gets a bit too messy to put a stamp on or anything like that. Also, I use a label machine and always put on address labels so I could cover up if it gets a bit too messy. And I'll come in with my spray again. The only thing to be mindful of is you've obviously got your seal on the back, so you don't want that seal to get wet because you obviously don't want it to seal your envelope before you even use it. So again, I'll come in and dry that quickly. Now I've got a really awesome envelope that matches 
my little thank you card that I can give out to someone and I love that they go together and coordinate and that will just slide right inside my envelope like so and then I can just give that to someone and obviously my little message would go on the back of my card so I love how those look together I love doing things like this and I love making them up as little bundles to give to people and this just took me, like once I've die cut, which only took me a few seconds, this whole project, my envelope and my little card, only took me about five to 10 minutes to make in total. Absolute tops. Um, so it's a fantastic quick way to make some lovely little cards. Now when I do this, I do do them in bulk because I like to have lots of them. And I like to have quite a few to sift through and use up. Um, so that's why I do quite a few at a time. Now on the envelope you can see that mica powder a lot more. It's shining a lot better than it was on the bit of card and I think that's because I've only used the one stamp so you can kind of see the mica powder spread across the envelope. Now let me share with you some of the other ones I made. Now my daughter Rosalie's birthday is coming up in a couple weeks and she wants to have a little party so I thought I would make some little invites. So I have just stamped using these ones here that I made. I used Alina's new uh, butterfly stamps, or butterfly dies I should say, sorry. And they come in as a set of four different butterflies. They're gorgeous. And I just die cut two of them out and I used my Distress Oxides and I used Picked Raspberry and Peacock Feathers. I believe it might have been worn lipstick. <laughs> so I apologize if it's not the correct color. And I just made a whole bunch of birthday invites. And some of them you can see the mica powder really well on. But I had a lot of fun and I just did up some invites for her. And I will go ahead as well and I will make envelopes to match. So I will do the same as this. I will stamp a butterfly on the edge and spray it. And then I will probably leave it on my floor to dry overnight <laughs> so that I don't have to heat set them all. But I did a whole little set of invites, which is nice and quick and easy. This is a stamp from Stampin' Up! It was in my stash. Um, came in this set here. And I used the thanks so much as well on some of mine. But I really liked the little font. But this is a quick way. I mean, these invites took me five minutes to make. <laughs> and they look so cute. Next up, I have these two here, and this is sharing with you again. I've done the exact same thing on both of them. Move them up into the screen a bit. These are some leaf dies from Surprise Creation. I really like them. They're a maple leaf set. I think you get five maple leaves in them. And this is the Distress Oxide and this is the Distress Ink. So you can see the total difference between them. This is a more chalky finish that spreads quite easily. This is a much more brighter, vibrant finish that spreads just a bit less. And you can see those details there. That's the embossed um, die, uh, the embossing on the die, and you can see it in your stamping. So these are the exact same colors, just in the opposite. So we've got Carved Pumpkin and Squeezed Lemonade. And we've got, oh, no, I lied. The pumpkin's different. <laughs> I've got Spice Marmalade, not Carved Pumpkin, and Squeezed Lemonade. They're very similar oranges. There's not too much difference in them. Um, but you can see the difference in how they react. Now, they were both sprayed with the white shimmer spray. And you can see there's just a slight hint of shimmer. Whereas this one is very covered in shimmer. So for whatever reason, the Distress Oxide mutes the shimmer as well. So I love them both, but I prefer the normal Distress Ink. Now this one was using Distress Oxides, and again, some flower dyes from Surprise Creations. So they come as a set of three or four. Sorry, they come as a set of three with two leaves in them. And on this one, I stamped the bigger one in the pink and I stamped the slightly smaller one in the blue and I then ended up with this cool kind of rainbow colored effect um, with the two together. Next I did this one in oxide ink and again it was another set of dyes from Surprise Creation and I just used this kind of fun little embellishment one to do this background. 
and I did it again but again this one is using the normal distress ink and my shimmer spray so I love how they turned out so much here's that same one we just did this blue one and this is the distress oxide so this is the seedless preserves and I got such a cool look from it when I added the water. Now that is one time where the oxides look so cool when you add water. And I got such a fun effect out of that one. And I don't know how I did it. I've really got to learn more about using oxides. But I love how this one turned out. This is the same color, see this preserves, but in the regular distress ink. And so you can see that shimmer. And the shimmer really stuck to the flowers um, where the pigment was. And another stamp from my stash which says thank you so much. Now here is the same effect I did before. So this was the, the Distress Oxides and this is using the regular Distress Ink. And I've got that really cool blend. I did the purple and the blue and got a really beautiful kind of mix between those two colors. So just so much fun. You can play and play and play. There's the same one I did for Rosalie's Invites but I put thanks so much on it. Here's more of the maple leaves but I did pink and green instead and I love how it turned out. Again, some more butterflies, and then some more flowers. I did two colors on here, but I did a really pale pink, so it's hard to tell. But I did double flowers again, and they were dead easy to line up because of that hole in the middle. It was really quick and easy to line up. So I had so much fun making these little stamps out of my dies, stretching the use of those, and making some more notelets that I can now give out to people and put in my stash. I can make up some little bundles of notelets that other people could use to give out themselves and I'm going to go back and I'm going to make my envelopes to match for all of these because I love matching envelopes so thank you so much for joining me I hope you had fun today I hope you learned something please do subscribe to my channel and do hit the like button and the bell button apparently you won't get notified about my videos unless you hit the bell button but thank you for crafting me with me today. I'm sorry again, it's a long one, but I love sharing these kind of ideas with you. I will link everything I can down below of the things I've shown you today. And um, yeah, have fun, dig through your stash, find what you've got already and make the most of it. Thank you for joining me, bye.